Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this online service for First Lutheran Church and Preschool. I'm Pastor Andy Jones. Today we start a new ser sermon series called Poetic Wisdom. We'll be looking at some different things from the Bible, particularly today we're looking at the book of Ecclesiastes and how that book teaches us how to live. What's the best way to live? That's the question we're going to be looking at today. And as we move through this sermon series, we'll be looking at other things in the scriptures that help us understand what is wisdom and what should we be doing with our lives. God's blessings as you join us in worship this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Good morning. Welcome to First Lutheran Church and Preschool. My name is Pastor Andy Jones. So good to see all of you this morning. I go away from a week and my batteries die. I don't know what happened. I'll have to talk to Pastor Mike about that. Uh, welcome. A few announcements before our service begins. Next Sunday is the first Sunday of the month, which means it's a mites Sunday. We collect mites for the Lutheran Women in Mission and the projects they support. We'll have the mite box out next week, so remember your little box for next time. I'm going to be out of town this week. I know I was out of town the week before, but uh, this is a work retreat. Every year I go on this little work retreat with another pastor up in Brentwood, and we go up to Tahoe, we go hiking, we do devotions, we plan out the next year of things at our churches, and it's a great time. So please pray for me this week as I'll be looking at what's up next for our church. Uh, but I'll be out of town, and the office will be closed as our admin assistant is also out of town this week. So if you need anything, you can call me. I'll be available. Uh, but if there's an emergency that requires more immediate attention, Pastor Mundinger from Holy Cross, his information is in first notes if you need it. Also coming up, a couple of things. On Monday and Tuesday, August 8th and 9th, that's not this week, that's next week, our parking lot is getting resurfaced. So if you come to church, you're going to have to park on the street and walk up. Okay, just be aware. The preschool is going to be closed those days. There's a planned closure for them. Uh, but please know that the parking lot is getting redone so that'll look nice and fresh so thanks to all the trustees especially kent for all of their work on that and finally in a couple of weeks we are having another movie night that's going to be friday august 12th out here on the lawn and we're going to be watching the movie in kanto so if you haven't seen it i haven't i've been saving it just for this moment but if you've seen it i'm guessing you'll know how to sing along to it so Please do come for that. It's, it'll be a great time. Sunsets at 8.04, and we'll start right around then. So please join us for movie night on August 12th. That's all the announcements that I have for this morning, except for the Bible that's in my hand. <clears throat> all right, our Bible for the day is in Korean. So a little bit about Korean. 
It's a language spoken by more than 75 million people, about 48 million in South Korea and about 24 million in North Korea. As of 2019, there are over 7,300 people who speak Korean in Contra Costa County. And Korean is classified as a language isolate, which means it shows no significant link to any other existing language on Earth. I don't know what that means exactly, but that's really interesting to me. So, our Bible's in Korean. We have to put it out there somewhere today. Hey, Addie, you ready for this one? All right, come on. We always have the kids put the Bible somewhere, so go for it. Put it wherever you like. All right. Just going to keep it for herself today. All right, that's all the announcements that we have for this morning. Please stand as we sing our opening hymn, Gracious God, You Send Great Blessings. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die and rise for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are forgiven. We receive every good thing from God's hand. The psalm for the day is Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. 
Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, grant us wisdom to recognize the treasures you have stored up for us in heaven, that we may never despair, but always rejoice and be thankful for the riches of your grace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. It's now time for the children's chat. So boys and girls, if you want to come on up to the front, I've got a message for you today. All right. So I have a couple of questions for you this morning. They're pretty easy though, okay? You ready? What is your favorite thing to eat? Addy. Ooh, I like a good chicken finger. What do you dip your chicken fingers in? Ketchup? Ranch dressing? You and I are on the same page. Yes. Chicken fingers with ranch dressing. That sounds really good. How about you, Julia? What's your favorite thing to eat? Burger King. Ooh, I could go for a Whopper. That sounds good. What's this little one's name? Ophelia. Ophelia. Oh, what's her favorite thing to eat? Milk. I was assuming so. Yeah, that's the, that's the next question. What's your favorite thing to drink? Ophelia likes to drink milk. How about you, Eddie? What do you like to drink? Fanta orange. Ooh, that sounds good. How about you, Julia? Strawberry lemonade. These kids know what's good, don't they? Goodness gracious, yeah. I would say my favorite thing to eat is probably pizza, pepperoni, no olives, and my favorite thing to drink is probably coffee. I like a good cup of coffee in the morning. How about this one, though? What is your favorite thing to do? If you could do anything in the world forever and ever, what would you do? Draw. Okay, cool. How about you, Eddie? Play games. Nice. What would Ophelia do, do you think? Oh, she's going to play board games with her mom. That sounds like fun. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Yeah. 
One of my favorite things to do is to write. I really like to write. Now, in one of our Bible readings for today, you're going to listen, and you're going to hear it talk about those three things. Eating, drinking, and doing things. Doing things that you love to do. Okay? And that's how we're supposed to live our lives. That's the answer to how we're supposed to live, is we're supposed to enjoy eating good things, enjoy drinking good things, and enjoy doing good things with people we love. That's the best way to live. It sounds very simple, doesn't it? Yeah. But that's the kind of love God gives us, that we can eat and drink and enjoy each other's company and enjoy doing good things because he loves us. Okay? So we're going to say a prayer together, so please fold your hands. and repeat after me. The congregation can join. Dear Jesus, thank you for giving us food and drinks and things to do. Amen. All right, thank you all. You can go back to your seats. The Old Testament reading for today is in the book of Ecclesiastes, beginning at verse 1 with selected verses after that. Vanity of vanities, says the preacher. Vanity of vanities. All is vanity. I, the preacher, have been king over Israel in Jerusalem, and I applied my heart to seek and to search out by wisdom all that is done under heaven. It is an unhappy business that God has given to the children of man to be busy with. I have seen everything that is done under the sun, and behold, all is vanity and striving after the wind. I hated all my toil in which I toil under the sun, seeing that I must leave it to a man who will come after me, and who knows whether he will be wise or a fool. Yet he will be master of all for which I toiled and used my wisdom under the sun. This also is vanity. So I turned about and gave my heart up to despair over all the toil of my labors under the sun." Because sometimes a person who has toiled with wisdom and knowledge and skill must leave everything to be enjoyed by someone else who did not toil for it. This also is vanity and a great evil. What has a man from all the toil and striving of heart with which he toils beneath the sun? For all this, all his days are full of sorrow and his work is a vexation. Even in the night his heart does not rest. This is also vanity. There is nothing better for a person than that he should eat and drink and find enjoyment in his toil. This also I saw is from God, from the hand of God. For apart from him, who can eat or who can have enjoyment? For to the one who pleases him, God gives wisdom and knowledge and joy. But to the sinner, he has given the business of gathering and collecting only to give to one who pleases God. This is also vanity and striving after the wind. This is the word of the Lord. And the epistle lesson is in the book of Colossians, chapter 3, beginning at the first verse. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your light, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil, desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming. In these you too once walked when you were living in them, but now you must put them all away. Anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obscene talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge after the image of its creator. Here there is not Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free, but in Christ is all and in all. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the Alleluia in verse and the reading of the Holy Gospel. Alleluia. Whatever you do, Work heartily, for as the Lord, and not from men, knowing that from the Lord 
you will receive the inheritance as your reward. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. But he said to him, Man, who made me a judge or arbiter over you? And he said to them, Take care and be on your guard against all covetousness. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. And he told them a parable, saying, The land of a rich man produced plentifully. And he thought to himself, What shall I do? For I have nowhere to store my crops. And he said, I will do this. I will tear down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul is required of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So is the one who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from our Lord, Savior, and enjoyment, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for the sermon is the Old Testament reading from Ecclesiastes, especially these words in chapter 2, verse 24. There is nothing better for a person than to eat and to drink and to enjoy their labor. Today we begin a sermon series that I am calling Poetic Wisdom. We're going to be looking at different sayings in the scriptures, different pieces of wisdom that the scriptures give us as to how to live our lives. And we begin with the book of Ecclesiastes. Now, Ecclesiastes is one of those books that people either really, really love because it speaks this deep truth to them and they just love chewing on the wisdom of Ecclesiastes, or it's a book that people really don't like. It's a book that people find to be just this absolute downer. Because after all, it repeats again and again and again. Everything is vanity. Everything is worthless. Everything is striving after the wind. I'm not sure where you fall on Ecclesiastes, but we have to reckon with that reality. Ecclesiastes is a book essentially that is trying to answer one question. What is the best way to live what is the best way to live that is such an applicable question for all time and all places it's something that we all have to choose every day what is the best way to live solomon gives us several possible answers throughout the book of ecclesiastes and we're going to look at some of those answers today the first answer to the question, how should we live, that Solomon offers up is to collect pleasure. Collect as many pleasures as you possibly can. And if you look around at the world today, I would guess that this is how most people, whether they know it in their brains or not, this is how most people have answered this question. What's the best way to live? Collect as much pleasure as possible. Life is short. Collect the pleasures. It's such a temptation for us. It's so easy to collect the pleasures. It's so easy to look at your bank account and think, I need to make that grow and grow and grow and grow. 401k, got to get bigger. IRA, got to get bigger. More property, more everything. I got to get more. It's so easy to get caught in this cycle, in this trap of wanting new stuff, upgraded stuff over and over and over again. All this stuff is good things. These are good gifts from God. Don't get me wrong. But there's something wrong when we get stuck in this cycle. This cycle of, you know what? I want a new car. I got a new car. You know what? This kitchen probably needs an update. Let me update the kitchen. You know what? The floors in the living room don't match the kitchen anymore. I got to update the floors. You know what? The furniture doesn't match the floors anymore. I better update the furniture. You know, I don't really want to be inside. I better go outside, and I better update that furniture on the patio. You know, I really like being outside. I should probably buy a camper. You know, I need a new car to tow this camper. It's just this cycle. 
it never ends. We're never satisfied with the stuff that we get. We always want more. We always want new. We always want more, 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 more. Trying to collect these things just doesn't work. Oh, of course, there's other ways to collect pleasures. We can collect pleasures by collecting experiences. That's my favorite way, right? Who likes to travel? Anybody? Yeah. These are great things. It's good to go see God's beautiful world. It's good to experience that. But it doesn't satisfy like it should. I don't know anyone who's ever been on vacation and thought, you know what, that vacation was long enough. I don't need another one. You always need another one. You never get to spend enough time anywhere. You can have this bucket list of places you want to see in the world. You can cross every single one off the list, but by the time you get to the bottom, you think back to the top and think, you know, I really want to see that again. I better go back there. It never ends. These things never satisfy. Solomon speaks to this. Solomon tells us that he didn't say no to any pleasure. He collected them all. Land, money, houses, vineyards, doesn't matter. I'm going to take everything in, every pleasure I can find. I'm going to collect as much as possible. And I'm here to tell you, it's not any good. It doesn't satisfy. In the end, what Solomon tells us is essentially this. Collecting pleasure is like drinking salt water. It only makes you thirstier. It only builds your desire rather than satisfies it. It only increases desire rather than contentment and joy. So, that's the wrong answer. Collecting pleasure isn't the way to live. So Solomon decides to collect something else. He decides to collect something far more valuable. He collects wisdom. That sounds like a pretty good answer, doesn't it? I mean, that's what the book of Ecclesiastes is. That's what the book of Proverbs is. It's a collection of wisdom. And we know that Solomon was very wise. The book of 1 Kings tells us that Solomon was given wisdom beyond our imagination. That God gave him a breadth of mind bigger than the sands on the seashore. Solomon was so wise that people would come from all over the world to hear his wisdom, to listen to his judgments and understanding. There hasn't been someone so wise ever. He collected all this stuff, and he tells us, it's better to be wise than a fool. Light is better than darkness. But in the end, what does he say about wisdom in our reading for today? This, too, is empty. It's vanity. It's a striving after the wind. Why? Because what happens to the very wise and what happens to the fool is exactly the same thing. They both die. You can collect all the wisdom in the world that there is, but it will not save you. It cannot save you. Even if it is good, it is not the thing that can save you. Collecting wisdom ends up being empty as well. So then Solomon offers his answer, the best way to live. It's not collecting pleasure. It's not collecting wisdom. What is it? Eat, drink, enjoy your work. Well, that doesn't sound very satisfying, does it? It sounds pretty simple. And yet in this simplicity, we find this profound answer, this profound answer that applies to everyone. Whether you are rich or poor, eat, drink, and enjoy your work. Whether you are, whether you are from the 9th century BC or the 21st century AD, eat, drink, enjoy your work. No matter what time and place you live, whether wise or a fool, that's what you can do. It applies to all people. This is what you're supposed to do. But what truly makes it so profound is what he says after that. He tells us that the reason that this is what you should do is because apart from God, you cannot eat or drink or have any enjoyment. 
In the end, that call to eat, drink, and enjoy your work is a call to tether yourself to God. It's a call to be with God because from him is where all of those good things come from. He is the source of all those things. You can have no enjoyment apart from him, so tether yourself to the Lord. And more than that, what, what I find so fascinating about this list of things, eat, drink, enjoy your work, is it is calling us back to Eden. Think about Adam and Eve before they fell into sin. Think about what their lives consisted of. What did they do? They were given the fruit of the trees of the garden to eat. They didn't need to collect any of them. Whatever tree they wanted to eat from that day, they just went and saw, oh, a tree, look, fruit, ate. And it was delicious and perfect for them in that moment. They didn't have to hoard all the apple trees from this tree or hoard all the banana trees from this tree or hold all the papaya trees from this tree. They were going to be there every day because God was going to provide for them, and they trusted that. They trusted him to provide. They were able to drink. Four rivers flowed around Eden. They could drink from any one of them they want, the most perfect, pure water ever. And it was never going to run out. There was going to be no drought in Eden. God would provide. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow, God was going to provide food and drink. And what did they do? They had day-to-day -day vocations, things to do. They took care of the garden. They took care of the animals there. They took care of each other. Eat, drink, and enjoy your work is just a call to return to a world that was perfect, a world where we didn't have to think about collecting all this stuff and hoarding it for ourselves because we trusted that God would provide. Collecting all this stuff is just evidence that we don't trust God to provide. Solomon is calling on us to attach ourselves to God and go back to Eden. And yet here today, on this side of Jesus, we can see something that Solomon doesn't see. We can see that Jesus came into our world and tethered himself to us, became a human being who ate and drank and had work to do. And in Jesus, in tethering himself to us, dies just like we die. But since we are tethered to him, we are attached to him, he rises from the dead, which means we are going to rise from the dead too. And when we rise from the dead, guess where we're going to be brought? Into a new creation, into a new Eden, into a perfect place where we will be able to what? Eat and drink and enjoy the work that God gives us to do. That's the answer to the question, friends. That's how you live, by attaching yourself to the Lord who has attached himself to you, by enjoying the good gifts that he gives you without worrying about what's coming tomorrow, with living every day in the vocation that he has given you, in the relationships that he has given you. Eat. Drink, enjoy your work. There's nothing better. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We sing the sermon hymn, Praise and Thanksgiving.
Please stand as we confess our common faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Together we confess, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In our prayers this morning, we remember the family and friends of Sherry Best. Sherry was a longtime member here, and Sherry passed away last Saturday. So we remember her family in our prayers. We turn to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we pray for all of those who are sick, injured, and recovering. Especially today, we pray for Ralph, Elsie, Elsa, Brad, Pat, Nancy, Barry, Steve, Ron, Ingrid, Kurt, Jill, Tom, Ellen, Sandy, and all those that we name now silently in our hearts. Bring healing and care to them according to your will, Lord. Lord, in your mercy. For the family and friends of Sherry Best who passed away last Saturday. Lord, we know that you are the God of the living. We know that you raise us from the dead. We pray that you would comfort her family with the promise of the resurrection to eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. For the nations of North Korea and South Korea and all those who speak the Korean language throughout the world, May all these people hear the word of Christ and confess him as Lord. Lord, in your mercy. For peace, for an end to war and violence, especially in Ukraine. Lord, as war continues and we are worn down by the continued conflict, help us to remain steadfast in our prayers and perseverance toward peace. Lord, in your mercy. For Lutheran social services and the work they do in the Bay Area to end homelessness. Thank you for their work, Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Finally, Lord, for all of those who are celebrating birthdays this week, this week we pray especially for Lily and Janine. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And is the kingdom and the glory forever and ever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Come, the table has been prepared. Come, eat and drink for your forgiveness, life, and salvation. Please be seated.
Please stand. Remember, these the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ keep you in the one true faith to life everlasting. Depart in his peace and in his joy. Your sins are forgiven. Now receive the blessing of the Lord that he places on his people generation after generation. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. We sing the closing hymn, Christ Be My Leader. Thank you for joining us this morning. A reminder, I'm going to be out of town this week, but I'll be available. So if you need to call me, email me, you are welcome to do that. We have coffee out in the breezeway, so please join us for a cup of coffee and have a great week. Take care, everyone.